Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, we're in the month of June and there are things the Lord have laid in my heart to begin to share with you this month. And you know the truth, if I'm not sure I've received a word from the Lord for you, I won't share. I don't just go around, what do I talk about? No. Is good. So I know one thing that these words are going to bless you and they are going to turn things around in your life. So be expectant. Praise God. And you know how we do it on this broadcast. Before we go into anything we need to talk about, we first of all make demand for our daily bread. Are you ready? Join me right now and say, Father, I receive now my daily bread it's coming to me in jesus name amen praise god do you believe in miracles if you do expect one today praise god thank you lord jesus i want to be sharing with us from the statement david made First Chronicles chapter 16. First Chronicles chapter 16. Thank you, Holy Spirit. First Chronicles 15, so, sorry, 16, verse 15. It says, Remember his covenant forever. David is instructing and he says, hey, remember his, who's the his there? God's covenant. And then he says, remember it forever. Why? Because the covenants are forever. His covenants are forever. See, covenants don't change. They are only enforced. Now, I know lately I've been, I've been talking along this line, but you see, the more we look at it, the more the Lord strengthens our hearts in these things because they are deep. You don't think God's word is just on the surface. Anything God says to you, you see, that thing that God has said to you, a thousand years later, it will still make sense. And you will now, you'll be the one, you know, you don't say it after a thousand years, say, I know it, I know it. No, a thousand years later, you look at that word again and say, whoa, I, I never understood this part. Why? Because the one who spoke to you is eternal. He is not speaking to you according to your times and your seasons. He is speaking truth to you according to his times and seasons. So what he tells you that is true, you will discover a thousand years later is more true than it is even now when it was spoken to you. You realize that it's more relevant then than when it was even spoken. Because when it was spoken, you didn't understand what he was saying. You just felt, oh, come on now, God, uh, uh, why now? You see? And then uh, you just rejoice and I will thank God. Uh, God has helped us. We're going to come out of this situation. But many years down the line, you will look at that same word again and then you go, wow, Lord, as though you see the end. But of course, He does see the end of the beginning. You know what I'm talking about? You go, man, ha. I didn't even understand the extent of what God said to me many years ago. Now I seem to get a meaning. You've still not got in yet. <laughs> Wait for some more years. And then you come again and say, ah, ah, uh -huh. yes, because the word of God is eternal. You know, that's why we must be careful how we handle the word of God. You may think you're smart today. Especially people who, 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 who try to exclude, you know, some things from, from, from the scripture or from the word of God. They try to exclude some principles. They try to exclude some, some instructions God gives to give to them. See, in all their bid to say we are wiser now or we are more knowledgeable or we are, or we are more 
um, sympathetic to the... See? But then what you don't realize, wait for some time to pass. You will come back and look at it again and say, ah, 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 God was right, we were wrong. So what David is instructing us here, he says, remember his covenants forever. And then he now went further to say, the word which he commanded for a thousand generations. A thousand generations. So start counting the generations. And he says, it's that far. Now when he says a thousand generations, he doesn't necessarily mean when he gets to one thousand generations, you stop the word. No, he's talking about the word that he confirmed forever. Because when, when David spoke this word, a thousand generations, you know, like someone would say for a million years. You understand what I'm talking about? So he wasn't saying the word was calculated that in a thousand generations, it must stop. No. He is talking about the word which he commanded forever. And David is saying, remember it. Especially those words that are covenants. I told you covenants are deeper than promises. But then covenants are predicated on promises. In other words, uh, covenants are made because of promises. So there is a good intention. Then a covenant is cut. Why? So that those intentions will be fulfilled without fear. If someone promises something, if someone says, oh, I'm going to do this for you, it's fantastic. You may be happy, but that can change. But when somebody says, okay, you know what? Give me this thing. Then I'm going to do this thing for you. Now, when you agree to that, it has become a covenant. Now, what does that mean? It's no more a one-sided promise. There is a stronger commitment that now exists where this thing is. So if the person fails, even after you have done your part, you can actually make case, make a case with that person. Then the person cannot say, hey, but it's me that promised you something. And no, it's not just a promise. It became a covenant. And if you break that covenant, there are penalties for breaking that covenant. So when God took, took his promise beyond promise and made covenants, with Abraham, because because he said it here, David was very specific what he was. So he was remember all God's covenant. No, watch this. He says the word which he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham. He didn't stop there, and his oath to Isaac, and confirmed it to Jacob for his statutes, to. Israel for an everlasting covenant. Now, sometimes we look at things like that and say, oh no, he was just talking about Israel. Now, so what's our problem? What's, what's our concern with what God was dealing with Israel about? But you see, that's how a lot of people don't know how to handle the Bible. Because you see, you see this thing a lot of times you see people do these things again and again and again and then you just wish hey can you just slow down lots of arguments and arguments and arguments and and from preachers i mean oh this is not uh, part of the 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 word of god this is not hey and what are they arguing based on the bible it's the silliest thing to do the silliest thing is to sit down and be arguing the Bible because it's a waste of time. We don't argue the Bible. We believe the Bible. See? And then also, you know, sometimes people think that um, if, you, if you understand the Bible, then you will understand God. It's not true. It's not true. You can't use the Bible to understand God. You'll be making a big blunder and you'll end up in error. I'm telling you the truth. 
Your heart may be sincere, but I tell you the truth, you end up in error. Because the Bible is not God. Ah, no, the word of God is God. The Bible is not the word of God. Yes. See, I need to say this. Why do I say this? It's not just um, terms in preaching. It's truth. Because a lot of people have been led astray by that idea. Which idea? That the Bible is the word of God. If we don't straighten this out for you, you would, you would continue living your life in confusion. And you'll be wondering, why is this thing not working? Sometimes it looks like it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Because you, you got it all mixed up. So because people think that the Bible is the word of God, so they pay attention to the Bible, which is good. But the question is, why are you paying attention to the Bible? If you're paying attention to the Bible so that you will understand God, you will end up in confusion, like a lot of people have. You don't use the Bible to understand God. Rather, you use God to understand the Bible. See, it's the other way around. So how can I know God if I don't know the Bible? Ah, the people that you read about in the Bible knew God and then they wrote about them. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. The people you read about in the Bible did not read the Bible and then they become great or they became great. No, they knew God, they walked with God and they were written about in the Bible. So what comes first? The Bible or the, no the knowledge of the Bible or the knowledge of God? So here you find yourself reading about a lot of people who walked with God and you're excited about them and you talk about them everywhere, but you don't experience the things they experienced. What is the difference? The difference is they knew God, you know them. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? That's the difference. They knew God and because they knew God, they functioned with God. And here you are, reading their works, reading about their lives, and then you go, whoa, whoa, God must be great. God must be really great. God must be really great. But then he's not great in your life. Why is he not great in your life? Sometimes you say, but I'll quote the scripture. I read the Bible. I read all the great miracles and, and, and I was expecting God. To, he, he, see, you don't know him. You don't know him. You will not know him because you have read the Bible 100 times. You will know him when you meet him. So your desire, in as much as, I always say this about the Bible, say everything, why the Bible is so important to us is this. Everything written in the Bible is true. So you can say the Bible is a book of truth. Yes, because everything written about, including what God said, including what Satan said, you know what a man said? Everything written here is true. But you see, the fact that you are reading the book of truth doesn't mean you will know the truth. The truth is a man. And that's Jesus. See, he, he said, it, I am the truth. And I've read this scripture many times. I pray you come to understand it today john chapter 5 let me read what jesus said here it will help you understand what i'm saying to you john chapter 5 oh libarika saiko minafai kata john chapter 5 and verse 39 jesus was speaking to the jews here and look at what he said he said, you search the scriptures. Now in King, Old King James, I'm reading New King James now. Old King James says, search the scriptures. And that's where people get, got that idea from. So even Jesus said, we should search the scriptures. But understand what Jesus was talking about before you jump into conclusion. He was actually reprimanding them. So he said, you are searching the scriptures. For in them you think. Notice. In them, in the scriptures, you think. 
you have eternal life. So these folks were always searching the scriptures. I mean, the, 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 the Jews loved the scriptures. They loved the book of Psalms. They loved the prophets. They loved the law. With all genuine, genuineness of hearts. So they go to the synagogue, they sit down. You know, those days you, you, you don't have the scriptures. You don't have them in your house. So you go to the synagogue. They are kept there like in a library, okay? So you go there. Now there are, there are times they have combined sessions where they read out um, the scrolls. And there are times people go there and pick up these things and they study them. Say, so, well, you can take it out. Because those are materials for the synagogue. So they search the scriptures diligently. Now the question is, why are they searching the scriptures? Exactly what people do today. Jesus said, because you think in them, you have eternal life. So if I know the Bible, you know sometimes I say, if I can just know half of the scriptures, I'll be just fine. No, you will not be fine. You will be better off from where you are, but you will not be fine yet. I tell you the truth. So Jesus said, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. Guess what he said? And these are they which testify of me. The scriptures you are searching, all the scriptures is testifying of me. Okay? And you are searching them thinking you have eternal life in them. But the scriptures you are searching testifies of me. But you are not willing. Now here's the problem. You are not willing to come to me that you may have life. So who gives life? The scripture or him? Him. Not the scriptures. The scriptures will never give you life. Ah, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you. Uh, 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 the what? Words that uh, you read. Ah, but the Bible says, faith coming by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith coming by what? Reading or hearing? Hearing. Hearing or reading? Hearing. So do you hear the Bible? Or do you read the Bible? See. Jesus said, you, will, uh, um, you are unwilling to come to me. So you find people who say, oh, I'm a, pro I'm a person of the word. I'm a person of the word. Hey, be careful when someone says I'm a person of the word. Which word? The Bible or the word of God? See, one may be saying I'm a person of the Bible. And yet he's not a person of the word of God. So he reads the Bible, reads the Bible. Then you approach him and say, Ah, do you know God, God spoke to me? You're like, please, please, I don't want to hear all these things. The, the Bible is enough for me. And when people start saying God spoke to them, God spoke to them, I don't want to. Pass. Hey, you are rejecting life. I don't want any confusion in my life. See, all these things, you know, this one will say God said, this one, another person will say God said. You know, see, eh, the Bible is enough for me. You are in error. You are in error. You've heard me talk about Bible teachers and word teachers. They are two different people. They are not the same. They don't carry the same ministry. You don't need to be anointed to teach the Bible. You just need good understanding. See? If you're anointed and you're using your anointing to teach the Bible, it's a, it's a, it's a double blessing. You get what I'm saying? But then also, you see that double blessing for you as a person because you will see more. Okay? But if, if your job or what you've given yourself, because God did not give that assignment, if what you've given yourself is to be a Bible teacher, you will end up in confusion. But when you are a word teacher, a word teacher is not the same thing as a Bible teacher. A word teacher will teach the Bible. But you see what he does? He's anointed to teach the word of God. So he begins to draw out the word of God even from the Bible. A Bible teacher cannot draw out the word of God from the Bible. It will be difficult for him. Because it takes the anointing of God's spirit to pull these things out. 
And if your eyes are not open to see it, there is nothing you can do. See? So Paul prayed and says that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened to know. How is the eyes of the under, your understanding? Is, how is the, the eyes of your understanding enlightened? By the word of God. So what are you talking about? By, no, not, not by the Bible. Not by the scriptures. By the word of God coming to you. By God speaking to you, let me put it in that sense. By God speaking to you, that is how the eyes of your understanding is enlightened. It's not like, oh, Father, enlighten the eyes of my. Oh, Father, enlighten. As I open the Bible now, enlighten the eyes of my. And then you open your Bible. It's not like your eyes will go, bim. No. Oh. While you are reading the Bible, then the word of God, the word of the Lord will come to you. See? And that's what makes the difference. This is what Abraham enjoyed. This is what Isaac enjoyed. This is what Jacob enjoyed. Everyone who has ever walked with God, this is what they enjoyed. The word of God came to them. I can't sound this enough until you get it into your heart. Praise God. So David is telling us, remember his covenants. Keep that in mind. Because my time is up. I'm going to continue tomorrow. Can I pray for you? Father, I pray today that even as we have opened our hearts to receive your word from your mouth, there is a flow of your spirit to our hearing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.